Hello folks and welcome to Four Season Backpacking. Please subscribe for the latest outdoor adventure videos. Oh folks, so this is the third time in three months I've actually camped in this spot. Actually like the fourth time. Uh, it's just a really good spot to chill out in. Um, I'm not going to get full of fantastic shops drone wise because it gets dark early. Because the mountains block out the sun. So it's sunset here about six something already. When everyone on top of the mountains at the moment, uh, sunset will be around nine something, almost ten o'clock, possibly. I'm not sure, probably around ten o'clock. Um, but it's just so hot today, and I want it to be in the shade. I want it to chill out. Um, I'm just so knackered, and I, I realise what it is. It's carrying all my photographic equipment. I'm trying to rush to get the best shots. Oh, I've got to get this shot, I've got to get this really good shot. And today I just want to chill out. Uh, and it's an amazing location anyway. It might not be the best for videoing or whatever, but chilling out is perfect. It's got a river right by it. Um, so I can clean my stuff, I can cook, and just chill out and just enjoy being in the Lake District rather thinking, oh, I've got to get on this summit, I've got to get some good footage. Um, I've done one summit since I've been here. Um, no, two summits, sorry. Um, but that's, that's enough. I mean, I'm in here for another four days. So, and it's just really busy at the moment. I just, it's just too hectic, man, when you're carrying a big bag like that. And I think I think what knackers me out more than anything is just constantly filming. Because you have to stop, pick up the tripod, do the drone, and, do the photography. Um, today I just wanna I just wanna chill out. I might do a bit of filming here. There's not gonna be much of a video. This is more about me just literally chilling out and really enjoying the countryside rather than getting that fantastic uh hero shot on top of the summit. It's like yeah I mean from the top to the summit uh, you get some amazing views but to be honest I just want to chill out. Just, I don't need to get the summit. I mean, I've run and walked around the world in 10 years, 47,500 kilometres. So it's not like I need to prove anything to myself or, um, you know, <laughs> I've been there and done it. So I just want to chill out and <laughs> enjoy the video. Morning, guys. <laughs> I'm still here, I'm gonna spend um, at least to 12 o'clock here, so I'm resting. Um, this is my Garmin Temp, which connects to quite a few Garmin devices. So this is the uh, Garmin 6 Pro X <coughs> watch, which I kept connect the uh, Temp device with. It does have built-in temperature reading on this uh, watch, but Obviously, it's going to pick up my body temperature as well, so that's not the, the true temperature. So that's why I got the uh, Garmin Temp. I'll put a link in the description for it if you're interested in buying it. I'll also put a link in the description for the Garmin 6 X Pro watch. Um, it's not cheap. There are many different models. You don't have to buy this one. In fact, you don't even have to buy it, do you? But um, if you're interested, I'll put a link in the description for it. <laughs> Beans, it's um, a lazy day camping. Let's go through some of my uh, things I use. So um, this is the Mindel um, Valkrum MTX, MTS. Um, I'll put a link in the description for these. These are really good four season boots. In fact, I'd say, yeah, for the colder months, not for the summer months like now actually, uh, but they're very waterproof keep your feet warm in the colder months i wouldn't use them in the summer i'm only using them now because i thought it was going to be cold it's not really cold now so next time i go hiking i will be taking the trail trainers but these are these are brilliant for the colder months they're good in the snow you can put some snow chains on them uh, put a link, link in the description for these uh, this is my uh, probably a third or fourth pair as you know i have walked around and run around the world 47,500 kilometers in the last 10 years or even um, around the world and a half in 15 years probably um, but I that's why I've gone through so many pairs of them because um, I 
I basically walk every day, run and walk every day. So um, yeah, they get a lot of wear. They're very hard wearing, highly recommended boots. They're built like a tank. Uh, so if you're a light backpacker, they might not be for you, but if you want boots that are gonna be hard wearing and waterproof, keep your feet warm in the uh, colder months, definitely recommend these. <laughs> this is turning into a bit of a sales video, isn't it? Um, yeah, well, if you're interested anyway, this is a Spot X Messenger. Um, you, you can send uh, text messages to people. Obviously, it's not cheap. There's a subscription fee. Um, I'll put in the link in the description where you can buy this, but you have to buy it, pay for a subscription fee on top of that as well. But it is cheaper than the inReach subscription fee and the signal here in the lakes for this lake district in um, england is really good i've had no problems with it at all it's like even where i am now in a sort of like little valley um, i'm sending out signals no problem it's got tracking on it um obviously with the the subscription fee and i can send type in the text message to send you can receive text messages on it however do bear in mind that that will come out of your um allotted credit like i've got 200 text messages i think in for a year's worth so um that will come out uh, incoming text messages come out of your allotted text messages but you can block incoming which i have so i can ju i just send them out to say to people i'm okay i don't accept incoming because like i said it comes out of your allotted allotted text messages which i don't really like that because it would be handy for to receive the text messages as well which i can but I can't, just in case, I can't afford to, you know, for it to come out of my allotted text messages for a year, so. But you can predefine text messages as well. Like I think it's up to 20. Could be wrong on that. Check on the website. And um, you can enter those uh, predefined text messages on the uh, web spot website, and they're free to send. They don't come out of your allotted text messages. So that's really cool and you can press a button to check in and it will send um, a text or a um, email of your location with a link to the map um, in the email and text and that's come that's that's well i say free it's part of your subscription so you don't pay anything on top of that same as the predefined text messages and of course it's an, a rescue beacon as well so it's got sos help thing there so um you lift that up and press that and it will send out a message and that will go to a a worldwide uh, rescue centre and then they will contact the rescue services in this country so hopefully you'll get rescued if you get in trouble uh, but yeah I'll put a link in the description for this it's like I said it's cheaper than the, the uh, inReach um, messenger and tracker um, and I've, I, the signal satellite signal here in the lakes and in England in general anyway, I'm not sure, I'm not trying in Scotland, I'm sure it's the same, it's, it's, it's perfect. So yeah, check that out, link in the description. Okay, so I am actually sending a message to my folks to let them know I'm okay, there's no mobile phone signal here. So I've just typed out a text to send them. As I said, I've got 200 in a year in my allotted amount I get. Um, and I used the uh, phone app to type it out rather than type it out on the keyboard on here it's obviously easier typing it out on a smartphone than this uh, keyboard but you can type it out on that keyboard as well and normally it goes through within one or two minutes here um, and that's the menu there by the way so you've got like uh, messages where you can type in your own message no oh, sorry predefined messages in there or messages you received as well and then you've got create create a message uh was when you type out your own message and then you've got your contacts emails uh email addresses and uh, phone numbers and you've got check in that sends in your location to an email or uh, and a, a phone i think you can choose up to 20 and it, it sends it out within your um, subscription fee so there's no extra fees on top of that uh, it's got the tracking as well. There's no extra fees for the tracking that comes in with your subscription fee um, Obviously if you want to receive messages, then that comes out your allotted to, um, text messages you get whatever 
you've paid for. And then you've got navigation, which I, I don't use, I've got a GPS anyway, got my watch, my phone, and then you've got the system settings. I'm using these for fly protection at the moment. The flies are pretty bad. Well, not today actually, because it's quite breezy, but yesterday they were, and I put these out and it seemed to do the trick. Now, I'm not saying for one moment that these are gonna work in a really midgen fested situation. I get the feeling they probably won't, but the flies I had yesterday, um, it seemed to, seemed to do help a little bit anyway, at least. But I always recommend a midge <laughs> if you're going, especially if you're going to Scot uh, Scottish Highlands in certain places without any, you know, you've got no breeze and it's damp, the midges are going to be insane in the summer months, so in the evening and um, in the mornings. So, but these, I, I would take these as well anyway, but yeah, you want a midge net as well. I'll put a link in the description for these, as with everything else. If you're a YouTuber and, um, well, you know, you take a lot of electronic devices with you. You're probably wondering how I managed to keep everything charged and do so much filming and photography and droning um, while I'm out and about. Well, I charge my stuff up, as you know, in um, train stations, libraries, churches. I do give a donation and a bit extra for that, using electricity in the church. And, of course, if they ask in the library, yeah, I give a donation to them as well. If they ask for it, no problem. Um, so this is a SD power, not SD, PD power direct USB charger. Now it, I think it can knock up, now knock out a maximum of 64 watts. I'm not sure what the ampage is, but it charges quick. It's the most, it's the fastest type of USB charge you can get. They take these little, these little uh, USB things here, and then there's a standard um, USB. I don't know if it's a 3.0, is it a 3.0 USB thing? But that charges fast as well, but these are really fast. Now, not all devices take these. Um, my Pixel 3 phone charges quick with one of these. Um, I'm not sure if the GoPro does, but it does charge via this, but I don't know if it makes it any quicker. Um, I've got a power pack that charges by this as well. White, really quick, like a, so it's not the lightest of USB plugs, but it basically it means I haven't got to hang around in the train station or library too long before my things are charged. So um, that's one of my charging devices. Now I've got this really cheap power bank. I think it's a 1000, uh, let's see, I haven't got my bloody glasses on. 1000, wait, well, no, just put my glasses on. Yeah, it's a 1500A. H. Well, you can read it on there if you want to pause it. And um, it's a power direct battery uh, pack or power bank, whatever you want to call it. It's got two standard USBs, which I guess USB free. And it's got um, a power direct USB, which charges up stuff fast. And it also charges up fast itself with the aid, like I said, this. And it takes this, this kind of USB. So they're both small. Small both ends, so power direct stuff has the USBs like this, both ends, small, goes in that one there, the smaller one. And then you've got the standard USB freeze there, I guess. Um, if you want to ask any questions about any of this stuff in the comments, please do so, because I know I'm only just giving a brief talk on what I, I use. I mean, I can give you much more details in the comments if you want to ask any questions. Then I've got this uh, Omi Charge battery pack, which charges up super quick. I think at like 60 watts it charges up, and it's a big old battery pack. Look, it's got the uh, it's 70 watt WH. Um, you can read that there. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I think these ones have been discontinued. There's a more up to date one now, which I can put a link in the description. Um, this doesn't have SD USB sockets, uh, I think they're just the USB 3, but it does have a little plug there where you can charge stuff up. Now, yeah, I know it's not the UK plug socket, but obviously you can get plug adapters, which is no problem, and it will charge up UK appliances. Uh, so, 
yeah it's got like um what do you call it ac dc um connection there and uh yeah i'll put it ask me in the comments if you want to know more details about this because it is really good it charges up so quick but the only drawback is I do have to carry this if I want to use it to charge it up, which is not, look, it just charges up there and look how big it is compared to the, the big USB charger. It's, it's quite hefty. I'll put it by the watch so you can see, yeah. It's a big charger. But yeah, I'm here for a week and I use a lot of battery power, so <laughs> another reason why my bag's big. Yeah, I've got a really powerful uh, Joby light for my uh, videoing and photography at night. Uh, I use it for the uh, Canon camera and uh, my GoPro camera. Um, really good light. You can um, charge it by wireless charging as well, this one. Um, what can I say, it's, it's not too heavy for the amount of light it knocks out. Uh, it's good for filming with the GoPro especially like I mean definitely highly recommend it if you uh, you'll find a lot of situations if you're a youtuber or whatever that you want to do some filming at night um, obviously you're still going to have to be close up to film it's not going to light up stuff in the far distance but um, for vlogging close up when you're talking to the camera this this is really ideal this is um, I'll put a link in the description for this <laughs> so look there's my drone there uh, there's my light over there drone stuff filters for the drone uh, Wi-Fi router uh, Pixel uh, free phone um, adapter for all the things I've got to charge up at the train station <laughs> library and church there's my charger for the drone there's another battery pack spare battery for the camera my Canon camera there's my Canon camera on tripod. Uh, and there's a backup phone. And there's obviously cases as well. For, uh, camera case. Uh, this is just, um, oh, there's a phone case. I think this is all my um, electrical stuff. Obviously, apart from I am actually using my GoPro 8 to film this for you guys. Um, this is just the electrical stuff I carry with me. So obviously my, um, my bag is gonna be big. Not to mention, obviously, food, cooking stuff, clothes. I've got too many clothes with me because I thought it was going to be a lot colder. But yeah, um, this camera here, the Canon G5X Mark II, really good for video and photography, lightweight, lightweight camera. And that tripod is actually really light. Like, um, I find that more useful than a gimbal. Um, I do not take the gimbal with me because I find that it's just too cumbersome to set up and keep setting up and stopping and setting up, especially when doing this type of hike. It's it's just too cumbersome. But the drone, yeah, also that can be a bit cumbersome because you have got to stop, um, put it together. Um, it only takes about five minutes, to be honest, to put it together and get it up into flying mode. But um, yeah. That's the last thing you want to do, really, when you've been hiking up so much steep. But yeah, that's that's the the blogger's way. But um, yeah, now you might be thinking, why do I need all this gear? Like when other people don't carry this much gear. Well, I do a lot of filming. I I um, do not take the car with me. I go away for a week or more sometimes, and clearly I need battery power for that if I'm going to carry on filming. I haven't got the luxury of going back to the car or a campsite or a hotel um, I've so I've got to keep going to train stations to charge up and libraries and uh, carry all this charging gear and battery packs otherwise I won't be able to film but if I like if I had a car it would be no problem I wouldn't have to carry all this stuff I'd leave this at the car and charge my stuff up in the car car charger and then just come up really lightweight gear but yeah, that's the way of low impact camping, folks. If you want to be, a, if you want to do lots of videoing and stuff and photography, um, and stay away for over a week, <laughs> it's a bit obsessive. But for my next hike, I'm definitely not bringing all the charging gear because it is basically I'm just going to charge up my batteries, 
I'm just <laughs> not do so much filming. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I love the sound of a stove. <laughs> Sounds like a jet engine. So, this is the Rab Silwing tarp that I've been using. Uh, got it a low profile setting at the moment. Um, it's very light. At first it was quite awkward to set up because my first tarp has been my first tarp as well. And it see that you've got that little bit at the back there. It's a funny shape. I've got a, a rope up on the fence up there because I only take one walking stick. But what I was thinking is it's it's good not just to keep the rain off you, but this sun like this is better than being in a tent because you've got a breeze going through and you've got some sun protection as well. It's really hot at the moment. Um, and I'm thinking for the Cambrian Way, Cambram Way, sorry, because it is a mountainous hike, that I'm going to take the lightweight uh, OEX bivvy and this tarp, reason being is it's, if I do that in summer, that's going to give me some sun protection as well. And if I got the lightweight bivvy, it gives me a very little bit of uh, rain protection but um, it's not as good as the Gore-Tex bivvy I'm using at the moment but to be honest that is heavy it's over 800 grams it's not a light bivvy uh, the OX bivvy is much lighter and more compact so I'll probably take that on the uh, Cambram way but yeah this is good for the summer I think it's just so refreshing in there out of the sun Army Gore-Tex Bivvy. Okay, so this is the British Army Gore-Tex Bivvy. It is absolutely humongous for me. I'm not very tall to be honest. Not sure how tall, but I'm not very tall. Maybe five foot five. I don't know, maybe I'm taller than that. I'm actually probably taller than that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, always make sure you got stuff secure when you're using a tarp because the wind just blows right through it or bivvy. Uh, it's not too windy at the moment, so I think I'm all right. Everything's under control. Anyway, so yeah, this is the British Army Gore-Tex bivvy, and it's really big, like I said. I personally could fit in like um, a day pack at the bottom of here easily, or clothes or whatever, and still have loads of leg room. Um, I don't know if they make them any smaller than this. I'm not sure on the size on it, but it's around over 800 grams. But it is very waterproof. I have tested it with a hose pipe, for about five minutes and it didn't leak there was one or two slight damp patches in there but as i said i was running the hose pipe at full blast for five minutes so i'd say in a big storm it should be okay i've not tested it in um, a heavy rainstorm yet i have to say but the hose pipe test gives me some confidence in thinking it should be okay and as with everything else, I'll put a link in the description for this uh, bivvy. So the sleeping bag I'm using at the moment is good comfort rating of uh, zero Celsius, I believe. It is the Vade. Oh shit, I'm standing on something there. It is the uh, Vade Santis 800 synthetic. Uh, here's the temperature rating here. Comfort rating of one Celsius um limit 4 celsius stream 21 celsius and as i said it's synthetic which is brilliant for this country because this country is mostly damp even in winter to be honest you have wet winters um but this is absolutely fine for spring early spring and now it's late spring we're almost into summer now about 22 days to um so it's actually summer on the 22nd or 20th of june or whatever um so today is really this sleeping bag is a bit overkill because it was um i think it was around nine celsius in the tarp at night 
so I had the bivy on me as well, a Gore-Tex bivy. So, yeah, like all the clothing I bought as well was overkill. But bear in mind, this spring has been really cold. It's been below zero up in the lakes most of the um, spring. So that's why I bought this. But this will be the last time I use this, this uh, sleeping bag this summer. Well, this year, until obviously after the summer's over. Um, I'll be switching to the summer sleeping bag now. But yeah, this is ideal for autumn and spring, this sleeping bag. Highly recommended. I love it. it, it, it like, um, it's better than down, because down, if you're, down's all right if you're having a one-nighter in the UK. But um, if, you're, if you're away for more than one night and you get your down sleeping bag damp, you know, it's pretty much useless. Whereas this won't be useless if it gets a bit damp. <laughs> and again... The link will be in the description. All right, it's about time I got rid of, uh, packed all this uh, rubbish away. And that's the size it packs away to. To give you some idea, that's my uh, boot there, which is, I believe, a size 10. Size 10 boot or nine and a half. I think, actually, no, it's a size 10. So uh, that'll give you some idea how big this uh, packs away. Unfortunately, my, my camera lens is jammed. Uh, this cost me 800 quid, over 800 quid, this camera. Um, I can't use it, it's just jammed, just now. It's saying lens error 60, restart camera, it's not going back in. Uh, so hopefully it's under warranty still. Um, I've had no problem sending cameras back to Canon in the past. So as soon as I get signal, well, I'm probably going to start up the warranty process. I don't know if I can call them up. Or whatever, but um, that's really annoying because I have to use my, my uh, phone now to take pictures. But, um, I still got the GoPro for videoing and with the phone, I can video on as well. But it only does 30 frames per second, I do 25 frames per second. But uh, that is really annoying. How am I supposed to put this back in my bag without damaging, damaging the lens? I can't, the lens won't go in so. Any of you folks had the same problems with their compact cameras? I'm sure you have. Um, anyone had a problem with a similar camera to this? It's like I said, a lens and a lens error 60. Let's put it on. Lens lens error will shut down automatically. We restart camera error 60. Let me know in the comments if you've had any problems like this.